People ask me all the time two questions. How did I lose everything and how did I make it back? I lost everything because I didn't ask for help. Biggest lesson I can teach you today, and if you write it down, is to ask. Two questions to ask always. How can I be of service or value? And two, do you know anyone that could help me? The second one's far more difficult to ask. I will tell you right now, if every one of you ask every day, just once, somebody in person, on the phone, via email or media, radio, print, TV, or social media, if just every day of your life you asked one person, you would expand your network 30,000 times a month by one person a day and it won't cost you anything. And it doesn't even matter if you know them because everybody knows someone. In fact, when I was young and I asked somebody for help, they would go to their golf club or the card room or their church or temple and they'd have a group of five or 10 best friends and they'd say, hey, Dave Meltzer's unemployed and can you help him get a job? Some of us have experienced that our whole life in that network. Well, nowadays, anybody that you meet has on average a thousand people in their network that they can contact immediately and say, hey, I have someone very dear to me that's looking for a job. Can you help me? And if you did that every day, a thousand people times 30 is 30,000 people. Imagine if you do it four times a day, eight times a day, 12 times a day. I check my sent box to see how many times I'm not only offering some sort of service or value, but asking for help by asking, do you know anyone that can help me? And when I ask, do you know anyone who can help me? Of course, I'm assuming you're part of someone you know. So it's a much more subtle, easy way of asking. We're all one. Can we be of service to each other, provide quantitative value, and feel good and be joyous and happy for that? People don't ask. They don't take a direct trajectory. So I lost everything because I thought I could easily go get my money from the private bank because I had over $100 million in assets. And I little did I know my private bank was going under. And when I went in to ask for a line of credit, they said no. Nobody ever told me that you know, banks could go under. No one ever told me that just because I didn't have $40 million of equity that somebody wouldn't give me $5 million no matter what, and then it just got worse and worse from there because when you're running a big economy with a golf course, a ski mountain and 33 homes, stuff moves fast. And then you miss one payment and nobody wants you to borrow any money and all of your valuations are going down rapidly. That's how I lost everything. How did I make it back? <clears throat> I spent one day depressed and then Rocky came on and I told myself, I think it got beat up like six times. <laughs> He got up again, I go, gosh, if I can look up, I can get up. And I got up and I said, what do I want? I wanna make a lot of money. Why? I wanna help people. That's it. That would make me happy. So I woke up and I said to myself, man, I made a million dollars, nine million, I've never had trouble making money. Why would I have trouble now? How am I gonna make it? Well, when I graduated law school, I knew new one. I really didn't ever have a job. Now I was seasoned. I knew everyone. I was always kind, sometimes for the wrong reasons, but I was kind. <laughs> so I went and said, I'm gonna go call the richest people that I've met that know other rich people, and I'm asking them how I can be of service or of value. I was still CEO of Lee Steinberg, so I was making some money, but I wanted to make a lot of money. And so sure enough, through Steve Wynn, I went to a gala where I knew a whole bunch of people, Andre Ag Agassi and Steph, and all these people, and I just went up and introduced myself to a guy who supplies import export and I said hey I heard you buy and sell things is there anything I can get for you and he told me yep I need watches we're gonna be putting them into Asia I need uh, meanwhile I know a ton of CEOs of watch companies and different guys and I'm like well what how many do you want he goes ten million dollars worth and I did what you did on there that was my fastest way to make it right of course, it didn't take me very long because I found the watches, gave him the list. He offered 10 million for me. I went to my guy and offered him eight. We settled at nine, right? Another lesson from Lee Steinberg, never negotiate to the last penny, always be fair, and don't do business with dicks. <laughs>